Hey guys, just a quick video where I want to show how I created this animation. It's a simple back and forth swinging, very easy to do with constraint. Let me show and how I created the birds by using curve. For this to work, we have to model it from the top view. You can do it with a plane or cube, but if you do something like this flat and curved object, it's very easy to do only with the curves. The downside is that we can use a third dimension and we have to keep it flat, but at least we have a nice bell here that we can use without thinking about the apology and stuff like that. So when we model our thing, we just have to connect the curve at the end with OTC. This will close the cyclic. If we go to the data tab, we can top up the resolution to smooth out the curve with a few more segments. Under the active spline, we can uncheck the endpoints and this will make the connection smooth if you want to be curved there. Here is also the cyclic option that closes the curve. You can do it from here as well if you don't like to work with the shortcuts. So to give it some depth and extrude, we have to switch to 2D. And again, the bad thing is that we can use the Z axis, but that's okay for the thing we are doing. From the geometry, we can extrude the curve like that. And here is the fill mode. We can do only the back or the front, we want both. The only thing left is to add some bevel. And you can go out with it as we are using curve. Once we have it, we can rotate it 90 degrees, so it sits there on the X axis like that. Unfortunately, we have to turn it to mesh because we can't apply the rotation onto the curves. So I'll just duplicate it first and put it there for a backup. Convert it to mesh and apply the rotation. Make sure you're on the X axis because the settings will be different for the constraints. Let's add an empty. We'll use it to drive the animation back and forth. Put it there so it's laid down on the X axis and try to put the model in the center. This effect works best with a circle object, can be cylinder, sphere or anything round. Just try to make the bottom part of your object round and it will work fine for such a swinging animation. The origin point is down there which is responsible for the way the object rotating. So let's move it to the center of the empty. And now we can rotate it like that, around the center. We have to pair the object to the empty, then grab the object and go to the constraints tab and add transformation. So the target is obviously the empty. We need a local space of both objects. Map from is the target, our empty in this case, and we use the location here on the x-axis. Under this we have map 2 and this is the object, we need a rotation here, it's on the y-axis. Let's add some values to the location and 360 for the rotation. If we check it out, nothing happens yet. That's because we have to change the Y source axis to match with the location, which is the X axis. And now we can see the thing is working. If we go back to the constraint, we can play with it. So the max range is how far this effect will work. If we put one there, it will travel only one meter, making full 360 rotation and stop. If we put three, it will travel three meters, making the 360 rotation slower. That's how we can limit the rotation and control the speed, but we want infinity movement, so let's enable this option here. And now it works in both directions without limitations. So we only have to set the right speed for the rotation and we can do it by copying the diameter of the object. Again this will work best if it's rounded object, but if not just pick the dimension of the X axis, then add P multiply the diameter to the location values and the rotation speed will match with the size of the object. So we have this working and the only thing left is to animate the empty back and forth. Go to the zero frame if you are doing loop and insert single keyframe to the X location. Duplicate the keyframe like that to the end of the animation. Switch to the graph editor where we can select the X axis and play with the modifiers. 
I'll add a noise and tweak the settings here to make the swinging smooth and slow. We can also offset or face the graph like that. The depth will add more segments. You can play with all these settings to get right. So if you want to loop, the graph at the beginning and at the end have to be the same position. And the way to do it is by restricting the frame range, add the length of the animation, and let's blend it in, blend it out, and this will flatten the graph at the beginning and at the end so we can loop it. Just play with all the settings to get what you want. We can also add more keyframes and control the graph like that, up and down. So when everything is ready, just duplicate a few more copies. Then give the other entities different offset or phase to change the way it moves and we are ready. So that was the way we're doing it. Hope this is useful for some of your projects and I'll see you on the next one.